What's up everybody, Brian here, back down in the Gecko Lab. Thank you for joining me. In today's video, we are going to review the Thrive Tree Stump Fogger. All right, everybody, thanks for tuning in today. Like I said, in this video, we are gonna check out the Thrive Tree Stump Fogger. It's been a little while since I did some product reviews, and this was one product I had a couple people asking me about, so I bought one. I have not opened this yet. I did buy it with my own money. This is not a sponsored review or anything. I just went and picked one up. I have not opened it. I'm gonna open it with you guys, unbox it, give you my reactions, and then I'm gonna set it up here in my day gecko cage. This is actually the Thrive Corner Terrarium. I'm gonna put it in there if there's space for it. I don't even know how big this thing actually is when you get out of the box, if it fits in this tank the way I've got it set up. I'm gonna put it in there. We are gonna turn it on, test it out, and see what I think. So first and foremost, let's go ahead and open the box up, see what comes inside. So I assume this is one of those ultrasonic foggers that just makes like, um, just like the foggers I've reviewed in the past, I reviewed a couple of them that just that make it's like an ultrasonic element that makes fog. I assume this is something like that, just in a uh, more aesthetically pleasing package that goes in your cage rather than out of the cage with a tube that goes in your cage. Just comes with a basic USB plug here. I assume that's going to be your power source, and then you pull it out. Okay, let's see what we've got. So we have power cable with what appears to be an on-off switch. That's a happy face. That's weird. The on-off switch, the button is actually like the mouth and then there's two little indentations in the plastic that make it a happy face. That's an interesting choice they made, but okay. And then this is interesting. So I've never seen something like this. Most of the time these foggers, the ultrasonic element sits inside a reservoir at the bottom and then there's about an inch or two inches of water over the top that the fog then bubbles out of that. This looks like it's a full reservoir with some sort of wick and your ultrasonic element is at the top. I have never quite seen something like this before. I'm very curious to see how this works. But that is the basic fogging element and then it looks like you just have a decorative tree stump that fits right over the top of this and it sits just like that so you have a decorative fogger in your cage very interesting there is a little notch here in the bottom so your cord can come out and then you would run this up and out of your cage plug it in outside cool i am going to grab some water we'll fill this up and we'll test it out sitting right here first and then we'll get it in the cage and see how it works all right, so I'm gonna give you my impressions here before we turn it on. My first impression is just that the reservoir is pretty small. I know from using the other foggers, even my bigger one with a two liter reservoir doesn't last all that long, but you can't really fit a bigger reservoir underneath a decorative piece that would be a reasonable size to fit in just about any cage. So I understand why they did it. I do think that's gonna be a downside though on how long this can last before you have to refill it. Also, it's a bit of a pain to refill this inside your cage because you have to disassemble this entire thing before you can, um, you know, you have to take this off, unscrew it, and then disassemble it to refill your reservoir. So every time you need to refill this, oh, look at that, it's already working. Do I have it turned on? I don't know how it works yet. But you'd have to take it completely out of your cage and fully apart before you need to, dis before you can refill it which I think is kind of a downside, but it does seem to work fairly well actually. Check this out. You just screw that on. Apparently I have it turned on, which is something interesting I'm gonna go over with you guys in a second. But then this just slides right down over the top and you do have a fairly uh, interesting looking fogger. It is a better looking system than the other ones I've used. I do like I kind of, I do like that it sits inside the cage and it gives you a decorative piece in the cage, this is a nice hard resin, so it's going to be easy to clean and it's not going to be um, very conducive to bacterial growth, so that's kind of nice. The other thing to note is the ultrasonic element that makes this fog is actually really small. 
and it's protected by quite a bit of plastic here on the top, which is a good thing because those elements can actually cause pain if you touch them while they're running. And this one is so small and it's kind of recessed in there about a quarter inch that even if your gecko walked right across the top of this, its foot's not gonna go down inside there and hurt itself on that element. And that was something that I was curious how they got around that problem. I thought that might be an issue with this being a fogger that actually went in the cage with the animals. But overall, I do kind of like this. I think it looks good. It clearly operates well. Uh, one thing I do want to show you, I don't know if I can get this up here high enough. So check this out. Like I said, it's a little happy face. And then when you hit the power button, the mouth lights up green, except for when it's lit up green, that's off. And when you click it again and it's flashing green between green and blue, that's on. That doesn't make much sense to me. I think common sense dictates that if you clicked it once, it would be lit up green and that would be on. And if you clicked it again, the light would simply turn off and that would be off. But that's not how they chose to do it. Who knows why? I'm not going to question the powers at B, that B at Thrive. That's the choice they made. But interesting little system. I do like how it looks. I think it works fairly well. I like that they built in kind of a safety feature so your animals don't get hurt. Let's go ahead and see if I can fit this right here into this cage and we'll turn it on and see how it looks in the cage. All right, guys, so some good news and some bad news. I did try and get it in my cage here. I wasn't trying to film me doing that because well, I got a bunch of little day geckos in this cage and it's hard enough to open it without them escaping, without trying to film at the same time. The bad news is uh, this is too big. If you guys remember when I built this cage, it's got these cool bridges that go from one wall to the other, these natural grapevine bridges, but they take up so much of the space that I don't have a spot in there big enough for this to fit. So I then took it out to my bigger day gecko cage for my giant day geckos. And that's an 18 by 18, 24 inch Thrive cage. I also did a video on that build, if you remember. And in that one, I've got plenty of space for it, but I ran into an issue. Because this basically just sits on here and this whole thing just sits on the ground, well, these need to be pretty flush, flush and level for the top to line up with the hole here in the log. So you can see that needs to go in and these need to be pretty flush. Well, the problem is in a naturalistic bioactive vivarium like my one that I built here or my one out there, the ground's not level. The ground's kind of sloped and bumpy. There's moss all over the place. And on a tabletop like this, this sits together fine and the decorative part sits over the fogger perfectly on an uneven, unlevel ground with moss and spongy stuff on the bottom, it doesn't really work. This sits kind of wonky and crooked this way and then this tries to go on and they just don't line up right. And without a hard surface to sit on, they don't sit well together and it doesn't really work. Now you could probably make it work if you squished it down or leveled a spot out, but I didn't think of that before I tried to go put it in a cage and that's something I wanted to, to point out because I think this is most useful in a bioactive vivarium like this guy or that one out there, something where you can turn it on for 15 minutes a couple times a day. It's gonna fill the whole thing with fog, give you a nice like humid morning, humid evening, all that fog settles down and soaks into your moss carpeting. That's what these are really great for. And the way this one's built, it just doesn't sit on uneven moss, like an uneven mossy ground very well. So that's something I wanted to point out to make aware to you guys. Unfortunately, it just didn't work out for me. Putting it in one of my cages, I'm gonna have to redo some of the flooring to get this in one of my cages. I'm not sure which one it's gonna go in yet, but I'm definitely gonna have to redo something. I've got a couple cages that I'm currently working on building out. So I'm thinking maybe when I build those, I purposely build the way I put the plants and the, the level the ground, I'm gonna Put, build the spot for this to sit. That way it fits a lot better. Unlike the cages that I already have built that I tried to put it into, it didn't really work. So overall, I do think this is still a very useful product. I actually like it a lot. The pros are it looks good. It's a good material. It seems to run well. It, the downside, it doesn't have a timer. I would like an automatic timer built in so you could set it and it would just come on like twice a day and run for 15 or 20 minutes. You could always plug it into a timer, but an automatic timer would be super helpful. And then also, of course, the reservoir is pretty small and that's gonna run out fairly quickly and it's just kind of a pain 
to take it all apart to refill it when it's inside your gecko's cage especially if you're using it for something little like if i had it in this cage with all these little guys running around every two or three days trying to disassemble the whole thing with this big door open while i've got a bunch of little day geckos trying to bolt out of there that would be pretty problematic so i do like this product in the right circumstance i think it's a great product and it is a great way to add good humidity to your gecko's cage so if you're looking to pick something up for crested geckos day geckos morning geckos basically any kind of gecko that's not really really small this is going to be a great option for you that's going to do it for me today guys thank you very much for tuning in if you have any more questions about this please leave them in the comments down below i always try and get back to you guys as always i am brian with altitude exotics that's altitudeexotics.com slash ae geckos on facebook and instagram thank you guys so much i appreciate it be safe be kind to each other and i will see you soon